My name is Elizabeth Walde Georges. I am an art historian uh, of African and African diaspora art. I am an associate professor at the Africa Institute here in Sharjah on art history, theory, and criticism. So today we're presenting you with her, one of Henok Malkamzer's Elsham painting. The exhibition is going to be at the Sharjah Art Museum from February 24th to June 6th. I, just, I was just fascinated by the beauty of these articulations when I worked at the Institute of Ethiopian Studies as the director, that's when I was introduced to it. And I was very much fascinated with the intensity of the color, the intensity of the intricacy of the painting itself. Uh, and that's how I got fascinated with it. And I, I started frequenting Henok, Henok studio. But um, my whole argument for, for Henok, because I'm, a, I'm an art historian, I look basically at modern art histories of Africa and the African diaspora. Uh, but these types of paintings are not included in that category. And that bothered me because while these paintings are very much exhibited in the Western art platforms, as you know, some, uh, an art critic by the name of Holland Cotter, for example, called it a visual knockout for a 1997 exhibition at the Museum of African Art in Washington, D.C. So, you know, people are enamored by the, by the intensity of the, the, the intense beauty of the paintings, but at the same time, they're categorized as anthropological objects or ethnographic objects that are coming from a traditional African past and are being recreated by traditional artists. And that's, that's a bothersome narrative. There is a narrative of a sort that really separates us from the larger narrative of modernism, which is the European modernism, you know? So, so I wanted to provoke this discussion here in Sharjah, particularly. What is modern? What is non-modern? These categorizations of art itself. Non-Western art always had to be categorized in some category. And it just, it's bothersome. So that's the kind of discussion I want, besides bringing the beauty of this work to this platform, that's the kind of uh, uh, discussion I want to provoke. You know, we're exhibiting about 100 works at the Sharjah Art Museum, about 100 works, and, you know, phenomenal aesthetics. And I want people to see, to see it from a contemporary point of view. What does it say in the contemporary world? How does it relate to me? How do I, how am I in conversation with this painting? I'm in conversation with this painting. You know, looking at, at it gives me a lot of feelings about my contemporary moment. Mostly the eye is the center of the exhibition. The eye, Henok says, for example, is a key to understand the Talsham work. So the eye that surveils, the eye that looks outward, the eye that has, is a, full of wisdom. So it starts with the eye. So the eye is always, not always, but mostly in the middle. And then there is the vines. It's the vines that really make the painting, the intricacy of these vines, you know, can you see it? It's really uh, unbelievably um, in, in, intertwined with each other. So the vine is um, what the connection of the universe, whether we're in America or in Antarctica or whatever, we're human beings with the same type of human traits, with the same type of human feelings that we connect with each other in some, in some way as human beings, you know, with all over. Although there's racial categories and gender categories, whatever, but there is a human feeling that connects us, that connects us together as human beings, that's one. And then the human being is connected to the earth, to nature, to the galaxy itself. So that connection too is there. So whether we like it or not, we're at the mercy of some galaxy or at the mercy of the earth, you know, to live harmoniously or peacefully. So the vines are made of intense, I mean, the intensity of the shade of the vine varies according to the alphabet, the Ge'ish alphabet or the Ge'ish script. Like the Ge'ish script is made up of seven articulations. They go from uh, it's like the A, for example, is articulated seven times. The A is ha ha, ha hu, he, ha, he, ho, ho. The seven articulations of the script and the seven days of the week. 
So the intensity that goes from blue to yellow to red represents each vowel of the of the script at the same time, the seven days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that's the color. And then numbers represent the 13th month of the Ethiopian calendar, not 12 in the Ethiopian context, 13, because there's a five or six day period, depending on a leap year, between August and September is the 13th month. So the 13th month of the Ethiopian calendar and the seven days of uh, the week and the seven articulations of uh, the Amhada uh, uh, script. Um, so the face is the face, of course, is the face, you know, just the face looking, it's like the eye. So the face embodying a person, it's embodying existence, personifying existence. So that's the face. So basically, you know, this, this will give you a good synopsis of what the symbols are. And uh, I think we should uh, conclude by saying this is a, a very, although it's been practiced for centuries, it also makes us question what is, you know, the, this categorization in the art world itself. Because it's practiced for centuries, it doesn't make a traditional artist live, you know, through the tradition to today. You know, that tradition is the past, yes, but we live it today. We're remnants of that tradition. But how we articulate that tradition is what, uh, what matters. And that's what Henoch is doing. You know, he's articulating a traditional past in the present moment.